In this learning sequence, we're going to talk about the polarization of light. Now, we've already decided that polarization matters when you think about how a plane wave interacts with a surface, but we're going to find there's a lot more to polarization than that. So to start, we need a formalism, a mathematical way to describe polarization. So let's look down the barrel of a plane wave. And by that, I mean we're going to look at a plane wave like this, with a k vector coming out. Usually you might think we'll follow the plane wave. No, now it's coming at us. k sticks at us. So we'll put k on the z-axis. Um, put k on k hat. And let's see what a plane wave would look like if we were to do that. It would look something like this. So here we have x and y, and we're just going to plot the electric field. So if the electric field could be along the x, axis, or it can be polarized where the electric field is on the y-axis, and if we watched in time at a certain plane, it would do that, right? So the E field might oscillate along the x-axis in time, or it might oscillate on the y-axis in time if the k vector is coming out. Right? So that's what it looks like. So how would we describe that? Well, we would just say E, the electromagnetic field, is got some amplitude in the x, E not x, um, e to the j kz minus omega t plus we'll give it a phase in the x. And in the past we've been leaving these phases off, but now we need them because we have two waves. We're considering the polarization and two waves at once, an uh, x component and a y component. So because of that, we actually do need to... Um, keep up with the phase. Now, in principle, you could set one equal to zero and just keep up with the other, but for now, we're going to keep up with both of them, j hat. Okay. So this would be the full mathematical way to write the wave, but let's think about other ways we could write it.